It's a fresh start for Obeid in Kabul. The German government gave him 500 euros and he's invested the money in a small shop. Three months ago, he returned to Afghanistan where he was born, but where he now feels like a stranger. Life here is difficult for me because I was in Germany where everyone is on time. But here in Afghanistan, nobody cares. I really regret coming back. Obeid originally fled Afghanistan with his brother. They paid traffickers 8,000 euros. He now earns around 10 euros a day. But he says the worst thing about coming back is the almost daily terror attacks. His brother stayed in Europe. Obeid returned because he couldn't leave his beloved sister alone any longer. When he was in Germany, he only learned a few words of German on the streets. He was never offered a language class, although he lived near Frankfurt for a year. He says he wanted to integrate, but couldn't. Still, leaving was hard. At the airport, I started crying. And the police asked me if I really wanted to return to Afghanistan. I said, yes, I have to. I was really happy that both my brothers had made it to Germany, but I was sad, too. I felt very lonely and I cried a lot. I thought I'd never see my brothers again. For many returnees, the most vivid memories of Germany involve bureaucracy. Mokhtar Fazil also fled to Europe via Turkey and the Balkan route, paying traffickers over 5,000 euros, a dangerous journey. People told me I'd get a house in Germany and find work, but it wasn't like that at all. I lived in a really remote area. Mokhtar ended up in the state of Brandenburg, far from any urban centre. He'd hoped his wife would be allowed to join him or that he'd at least be able to send money back to his family. I thought at some point I'd get a passport and would be able to help my family in Afghanistan and I'd be able to go to school in Germany. Mokhtar lasted nine months before returning, frustrated, to Kabul. He hasn't found a job here either. Unemployment is rampant. The EU wants to send around 80,000 Afghans home to a country that, even according to its own government, is plagued by war and terrorism. In 2015, Germany said that refugees could come. So a lot of Afghans sold everything they had. And if they're deported now, it's a big problem for us. Afghanistan is overwhelmed. Something evident every morning here in eastern Kabul. Around 7,000 refugees are returning from Pakistan every day. Many of these people fled decades ago. Around 3 million Afghans still live in the neighboring country. Many were born in Pakistan and are now in their homeland for the first time, like 21-year-old Niaz. We have a lot of problems. We're living with relatives because we have no house. Hopefully we'll find one soon. But most of all... We want peace. The government doesn't have the means to help these people who left everything behind years ago. So the UN has stepped in. Most refugees come here first. Returnees are given $400 apiece on average to get started. Not just Niaz and his wife, but the two children as well. He's glad to get it, but knows it won't suffice. I dream of the day when I won't be dependent on help like this. I want peace, security, and an education for my children. I can't read or write, but I want them to learn. Around a million dollars are handed out in Kabul every day, an untenable situation. There simply won't be enough for all of Afghanistan's far-flung refugees. They have to start again from scratch. For most Afghans, it won't be the first time, and probably not the last. Obeid often feels unhappy about coming back to Kabul, so he's come to a decision. I'm going back to Germany. No one can stop me. And I'm taking my sister with me. Even if they make it, 
there's not much chance they'd be allowed to stay anyway. But hope springs eternal.